All right, here we go. Today we are gonna do pickled northern. Now the cool part about this is you can do it with any fish. It doesn't just have to be northern. I do northern because most people say, well, what do we do with the northern? And I'm gonna show you a couple things you can do with the northern. Most important thing I think is everyone knows how to probably fillet a fish. Is here is the fillet. And I've seen all the Y bones are still in there. I did take out the rib bones when I cleaned this, but I always freeze all my fish before I pickle them. And that just helps with the texture and it also helps with just getting it to where you want it. But I'm gonna show you a real cool way here to pickle this. First thing I need to do is take that off the bone. So let me, or I'm sorry, off the skin. And I did catch this, so don't let anybody fool you then <laughs> say I didn't. Then we'll clean up any of like. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, well, what are you gonna do with those Y bones? I'm not gonna do a thing with them. When you pick them, they'll completely dissolve. That's why you can do this with bass, northern, catfish, crappies, anything you want. One thing I like to do though, and I like to split it in half. I'm gonna rip it kind of down like that. And I'll rip it like that. And that's that bloodline. That is the only thing I really like to kind of take out if I can. You don't have to. I like to. So now I don't have that bloodline in there. If you have a bass, you can do the same thing. Now, most people make this mistake when I show them this recipe. They cube them too big. Remember, you want it to fit a cracker. So, smaller the better. You hear those bones? I'm going right. Yeah, you can hear them. All right, so after you get them all cubed up like this, and you can feel it, you can feel all the bones. It's not a big deal. Those bones are gonna dissolve. Here's all my waste right here. Now here's a little secret. Put it in a bag like this, unless your garbage comes tomorrow. Wrap it tight. Put it in your freezer and it won't smell up anything. And then the night before garbage comes, then put them in the garbage. So now it's just a matter of putting everything into a pickle jar. Normally when I make this, I go big time and I do about five or six of these. But for this purpose, I'm just gonna show you how to make a small batch in case you just catch one Northern and you're like, okay, what do I do? So you put them in there. Then you're just gonna use regular vinegar. You're gonna make sure all your meat is covered really good in that vinegar. Then you're gonna put cannon salt in there. How much salt? You can't put too much in, so really salt it. Okay, that's what's gonna dissolve those bones. You're gonna put it in there like that, make sure you got a good seal. You're gonna leave this in the fridge for five days. Biggest mistake people make is they try to rush this. And on the third day, they can see some bones sitting down at the bottom. So like, ooh, it's probably done. No, at least five days, seven days. You're gonna shake it every single day. I like to just put it in the fridge, do this. Next day, do that, and then I just shake it. And that's pretty much the first step. Uh, and then I'll show you here in a little bit how to make the uh, actual pickle seasoning and we'll pickle this. The whole process takes five days for this, five days for the pickling. You're eating fish in 10 days. Welcome back, boneheads. Well, it's been about five days since we started our pickled uh, pike here. So uh, let's uh, come around here and let's take a look at it here real quick. So every day I come in and I, I take it and I shake it up like this and just get all that mixed real well. And you can see if you start looking 
all that nastiness, that's all the bones and everything that have dissolved down at the bottom. So now what we have to do is we have to get this rinsed off really well. And you have to make sure you at least five days. If it's six days, seven days, no problem. But it has to be at least, see how white that meat's all gotten? That's the pickling part. So now what we want to do is we want to rinse it off really, really well. And it's real firm right now. You can just feel how nice and firm it is. And that's good. You want it firm. You do not want this much. Put it in a bowl and then we're going to give it a little bit of an ice bath. All that's going to do is re-firm that meat up real good. Let me grab some ice. All right. So we're just gonna leave this sit for about 20, 30 minutes. And while we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the, the pickle seasoning. All right, so here is the fun part of this whole deal here. We're gonna make our seasoning here. So I do this, for every one cup of vinegar, I put three quarters of a cup of sugar. So there's one, two, three, four. I'm gonna guess for this amount, that's about all I'm gonna need. So now I need to put four, three quarters of a cup of sugar. Turn that on. We're gonna let that get nice and hot and dissolve. And then I put about a half of container of this, this size. You can go more or less on this if you want. That's up to you. And what is that? This here is pickle spice, pickling spice. Um, this is a good brand. Um, I also like the McCormick's. Again, I usually go about a half a container for every four cups of vinegar that I put. So if I was making a big batch, no problem. I just keep adding one to one and I can add a little bit more of this. Then you take this wonderful bottle of wine I got here, <laughs> the White Zen, and you're just gonna add just a couple little shots. I'm gonna grab a stir and we're just gonna stir this up as it boils and all that sugar will dissolve. Once that sugar dissolves, you're going to let it sit. So I recommend doing this the day before, putting it in the fridge, let it get real cold. You never ever want to put hot liquid on your fish. All right, so this is now all the sugar has been dissolved. I'm going to let it cool down and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to mix our onions and fish together and, and my little secret weapon that's going to really make this set this off. So now we're ready to do the next part. Okay, so now we've had our fish in this ice bath for about a half an hour and we have our yummy yum stuff here that's been sitting now and it is ice cold. Make sure you stir it because a lot of that stuff likes to get down there. So now here's how it goes. Just go ahead and empty your the water and ice out of your fish. All right, so now you're gonna build it. And I like to put a little bit of onions first. You just wanna pile them in. Now notice how I cut these onions. I cut them round like this, and I didn't cut them up in little chunks like this. Right? Because when you eat this, you're gonna put it on a cracker, and it just eats better like that and like that. And trust me, you're gonna love the onion part. This is a sweet onion. My kids will just eat the onions and let me eat the fish. So put a layer there, put some fish, get it in there real thick. Doesn't matter, you can't hurt anything, so put it in. Now here is a little secret weapon of mine. This is some pickled jalapenos. 
and we're going to put them in there and these got some kick so i just like to throw a little bit in there so you're going to get the sweetness from that sugar and that wine you're going to have that vinegar and then you're going to have the kick from the jalapenos and uh trust me you're going to love it do you have to put the jalapenos in there no that's entirely up to you my family likes it um and the reason I go with small jars instead of the big pickle jars is if I want to give some away, it's a lot easier to give one of these away than the whole thing at one time. So you just keep layering it. All right, so now I got it pretty full. I stir this. This stuff is very, very sticky. So be careful when you pour this. So now you just want to fill it all the way up. And you'll notice when you do this, all your pickle seasoning is gonna get right on the top. So it's important when you put your lids on that you shake it. And this has to sit in the refrigerator for up to five days. I've, I've seen people say three days, just do the five days. I know you're gonna be like, well, Biff, I wanna try it. I get it. I too would wanna try it right away. Five days is like the magic number on this. Put it in there, give it a good shake. You're gonna shake it every single day and eventually all those spices will work its way down. Now what I have done also is add a hard boiled egg to this. And that really kind of sets it off too. Again, entirely up to you. I got a little bit of that seasoning on the outside and I know it's sticky. So I'm gonna wash it off before I put it in that fridge. And then every day, I just want you to come, shake it a little bit like this. And by the end of the day five, it's just gonna be wonderful. And it's gonna be ready to eat on a cracker. So if you get to this point and you got any questions, just hit us up. One of us will be able to answer the questions for you. Um, <clears throat> we're excited to do this and we're excited to show some of our family recipes, but sometimes there are questions. So, if you get here and you're like, ooh, how much should I put? Just ask and we'll answer the questions. All right guys, welcome to part three of this uh, pickled pike. Um, today, obviously what we're gonna do is we're gonna recap real quick what we did. Um, we took a northern pike, we cubed it up into small pieces. We put it in jars like this and we did vinegar and salt. Um, now it's real important that you don't use regular salt. You actually use the, uh, uh, I'll show it before this video is over. And then we let it sit for five to seven days. We shook it every day like this. When it was done, we gave it an ice bath and we also made our mixture and our mixture is real simple. It's uh, one cup of vinegar and you use four to five cups and then for every one cup you use, three-fourths of a cup of sugar. You add your pickle seasoning. You let that boil. When it's done, then you add it to your fish and onions like this. And then I always put in the jalapenos, but now it comes to the time where we want to taste test it. All right, so one of the things I always tell people is make sure you get a little bit of the onion on there because it's just as yummy as the fish. And you're gonna notice that the fish is gonna be even a little firm right now. I'm gonna get a little bit of My mouth's watering. I'm so excited too. for this. Go ahead and get yourself one half. <clears throat> Luckily, I've had this before in the blind, and that's been over a year ago, so man, I'm I'm excited. I can get that on you. As we like to say here, bone appetite. Wow. So one of the things I did notice on my bite, and I know in the first video I told you guys this, don't cut them too big. That chunk I had right there was just a pinch too big. 
And so it was a little bit chewy, but yours looked like it was thinner. Yeah, yeah. And it probably was just not chewy at all. So good. And you'll know that it's firm. And how long can you keep this? This is a question I get all the time. When that meat starts getting mushy, it's time to throw it away. How long is that? I've had it last up to five months, no problem. So, you know, it'll last that long. It doesn't last that long at our house because <laughs> these two jars will be gone in no time at all. Um, I did have leftover, just some pickling and some onions, and I kept those. I'm gonna throw some hard boiled eggs in there and let the kids eat those up later too, so. Awesome. Well, hey, that's, uh, that's our third video of this series in the books. Now, the Northern on the grill, phenomenal. The bacon wrapped walleye that came out last week was just absolutely delicious. Ton of good feedback on that one. And this is just a whole different type of flavor. It is so good. When you can pull this out of the cooler in the blind, when you're out hunting ducks in November, December, eat a little Ritz cracker, you can't beat it. All that being said, I'm telling you right now, his next recipe, is his best one yet it's there's nothing i've ever had that touches it so if you like these three you just wait for part four it is going to blow your mind so all right that's a wrap catch you on the next one see you guys man that's i can go through a jar that day well you're you're gonna take one home with you